All right, we are continuing our shower renovation series, one of many videos in which I uh, basically convert this fiberglass shower insert to a tiled shower, do-it-yourself style. In the last video we demoed, this is what we ended up pretty much with the last uh, video. We demoed the fiberglass shower, and we are gonna be installing this new fiberglass base and tiling, but that's all in another step. In this video, we're gonna be rebuilding the drain pipe because as you install a new shower base, fiberglass or acrylic, you have to make sure that drain pipe is adequately aligned. So I'm gonna walk you through how I did this. Let me first slide the camera down inside the floor through the existing drain pipe hole or the cutout around the pipe itself. This is with my camera. I just dropped it down there so you can kind of see what's going on. We have our two inch drain pipe PVC and there's a vent there off to the left. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is scout this out to see what you're dealing with. Now my old shower base, the actual fiberglass insert, was centered at roughly 18 and a half from that back wall to 30 inches from this wall. And so the new shower fiberglass uh, base is going to be similar, however not the same. If you could buy a shower base that does have the exact same drain alignment as your current one, that would be ideal because you don't have to bust into your floor and realign it. So as you could see there, I had about an 18 inch on center with the new shower glass, shower pan fiberglass base. So what I'm gonna have to do is basically move this drain over. And in order to move the drain over about a half an inch, I have to pull up the fiber or the uh, plywood floor here. And so to do this, I'm going to locate the studs underneath or the joists underneath the floor because I don't want to just cut a hole and have no place to kind of put it back into. So I'm going to adjust my circular saw at a 45 degree angle here. And we're going to make a cut, kind of a box shaped cut at a 45 degree angle. And you'll see why here in a minute, but this is gonna allow me to basically build an access panel that can be put back and fully be supported for the most part. And I'm gonna cut along the halfway, halfway on the joist so that again, when I put this panel back on later, I can, it'll have a place to rest on the joists. So we'll go ahead and get that saw blade adjusted at a 45 degree angle. And also I don't want to go too deep so I'm not cutting through my joist, right? That would be a terrible thing. So I'm going to adjust my blade height to about three quarters of an inch, which happens to be the thickness of the plywood. It's better to st start shallow and then you can work your way deeper. Look at that cut in just a second. I'll slide down a little screwdriver so you can see that and you can see the cut line as well so you so I know that I didn't go deeper than I wanted to that my joists are still fully intact and again you could see that it is at a 45 degree angle so with my cut basically now complete I will take a pry bar and pry up that subfloor you want to be gentle here cuz you want to put this back in a way that is secure and I don't have exact dimensions. It depends on how, how much of the PVC pipe you need to access under there. So I figured I needed to cut up about this much so that I could access and reach and rebuild the PVC pipe under there. You might need to you know, pull up more or less, but this gives me a good working area. So notice the joists there. Let me clean this up real quick We're using my handy multi-tool if you don't have one of these, highly recommended. By the way, I'll put links down below for all the projects, all the you know handy tools and whatnot that I think are relevant for this particular stage of the project down below in the description. So check that out if you're interested. All right, see what I mean by putting the kind of the trap door back on? It's super secure. I don't have to build up anything. All right, so that is now done. And the next thing we're gonna do is assess our PVC situation and try to figure out where is the best place to do a cut. Here's that multi-tool again. And I started out making a cut here and didn't like it, ended up having to make a new cut here. In other words, I'm gonna take it out just where you saw me point, where I'm marking right now. I'll make a cut right there, clean that up and basically rebuild the P-trap with the new 
measurements. So with my multi-tool blade, I will make sure that is as straight as possible, and I can use that old coupler, it's perfectly parallel, right, as kind of a guide. So I should have a pretty clean cut there when it's all said and done. Note my towel also, that P-trap will be filled with water. So now that that's cut out, I can carefully remove that and dispose of it properly. Now I'm gonna prep my, my PVC pipe here. I made a separate video on how to do this, but I'm gonna sand it down and then file it down to make sure there are no jagged PVC edges and whatnot. And we'll be gluing that in a later step. So let me take the fiber, the new fiberglass shower, and we are going to be dry fitting it just to kind of see, you know, where generally that needs to, the, the PVC pipe needs to come up at. So we'll go ahead and get that dry fit in. Now your shower pan might look a little different, but we'll basically drop it in. And I'll do a separate video on how to install the shower pan and make sure that it's level and the drain is actually hooked up, etc. And of course, separate videos on what we're going to do with the walls and how to tile those. So be sure to subscribe if you are interested in following me through that process. But here it is more or less dry fit. Now I do, of course, need to make sure that that is level. So I'll put the camera down and be doing that. Skip over those details for the moment. Like I said, that'll be in a separate video. And I am going to make marks here on my wall once things are level so that I have visual, I don't have to level it each time or get my level out each time. I can just make sure that that's aligned with the marks on the wall and we should be good. And obviously you wanna make sure that once it's level, make sure that your shower pan actually shows that it will flow water downhill, so to speak. In other words, you don't want that part to be level, see that? That's bad news. You want to make sure it's tilted up like that so that water runs down. So you might need to do some adjustments and whatnot. And why are we taking care of the leveling in this stage? Because that's going to affect how far up you need to have your runner, your PVC drain, this part right here, the drain that's going to go up. It has to be a certain height. And your instructions should tell you how far up that drain needs to go from the floor. Okay. I found it handy to take a little shim and kind of tape that to the floor. And you can reach through it and whatnot and put a line directly where that center point is. Then that way you can remove the shower pan and you can still see that, sour, that center point on the shim that you marked. All right, this is the brass drain that we will be installing on the shower pan. And this is another thing we're gonna dry fit right now. We're not going to actually install it. We're just dry fitting again to give you an idea of where that pipe needs to kind of move up and, and exit the floor at. All right, with our leveling secure and our general idea of where our pipe needs to come up the floor at, we can start to cut our PVC pipe and start to kind of dry fit our pieces together. So all that is new. I just made several measurements um, with the pipe itself and then went out, took the old PVC into the store and just bought new PVC, pretty much the exact same pieces minus a couple 45 degree pieces. But um, I've just built that out and then the treat, the P-trap is exactly the same. So I know it's to code. And that's another thing you'll need to make sure you consult with local code, right? That's important. And of course, if you're not um, comfortable dealing with this kind of stuff, you'll need to uh, hire a licensed plumber because leaking water is nothing to mess around with. So I'm just dry fitting everything and I put the shower base back in with the drain and look at that. I know that if I make my cut somewhere there, now I do have to figure out how tall I need this to be, um, but the alignment is pretty much perfect. It's not crooked, it is level, it is square. It is pretty much exactly on. Not bad for a do-it-yourselfer, I think. All right, so I'll make my mark there on the pipe to see exactly where I need to cut it. Noting the top of the brass, because I don't want my pipe to be taller than that, that would be bad news, but it has to be coming out of that ground at the specified amount. So now that I'm happy with my PVC dry fitting, I'm gonna make marks. These are just ambiguous markings, but basically when you glue these together, um, you're gonna need to, uh, to glue them in the exact position 
that you dry fit them, right? That's how you ensure that when you permanently glue these together and you go back in to install it all, everything will be exactly the same. By the way, if your PVC dry fitting gets stuck, you can just take a little two inch drill bit, round side down, and just kind of pop that out because sometimes those smaller pieces dry fit are, uh, you want to make sure that they're compressed all the way as you do your measurements and dry fitting, right? And sometimes those little pieces can get kind of stuck, which is a huge pain in the butt. But if you have a vise and a little two inch drill bit, you can kind of tap that two inch PVC pipe out of the coupling without without issue and undamaged. All right, so next we are gonna be ready to go ahead and install our two inch brass drain on our shower pan. Now you wanna read the instructions. I'll put a link down below for this specific drain that I bought. Every drain I think is generally, well, they're all different, right? There are a lot of, a lot of varieties out there. Um, I know there are a couple, for example, Odie and Easton, I think make two drains that are pretty much identical. Um, and depending on their recommendation, they're gonna call for plumber's putty or silicone. Now I prefer plumber's putty. The one that I had, the, the drain that I bought did not call for a specific one. So I had to do some research and decide which one I wanted. And basically plumber's putty, tried and true. Um, it's cleaner. If I have to reinstall this or make adjustments, I don't have to pull it out and cut anything off. I can just kind of pull it out and replace it. I don't know. It's not super clear to me which one you should use. So maybe do some research on that on your own. There's a lot of people that love silicone and a lot of people that love plumber's putty. So jury is still out on that. So we'll go ahead and take a bead of plumber's putty, nice and liberally, as you noticed and we'll place it on the underside flange of that brass drain. And here's a look at the underside. There is a thin rubber washer, a paper washer, and a brass nut. In that order, those will be applied to the underside and tightened down by hand. And as you turn and twist by hand, there will be some resistance because of that uh, liberal application of plumber's putty on the other side, right? So there's what it looks like. It's got to basically depress all of that down. And as you tighten that nut underside on the underside, look at that. Look at it actually depress down very slowly. As you tighten that up, you want to make sure that 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 drain goes downward, not in a lopsided way, right? You want to make sure it's nice and even. And then you'll take a little plumber's or a little uh, pipe wrench and then um, finish that up nice and tight. And you can peel that excess plumber's putty away and reuse that later. That is still good stuff. And we'll seal that back up. That'll be good for another renovation in, oh, seven to 10 years, maybe, hopefully. All right, and then we'll wipe that away with our fingers, the excess a little bit. So pretty simple up until this point. There's another look at me tightening up just an extra little bit to make sure we are good and tight. And I do try to avoid contact. That plumber's putty should not touch any part of the shower pan just for safety purposes. You don't want any stains or whatnot. All right, next up, this process will show you how you can actually glue the PVC together for that P-trap that we had dry fitted and marked earlier. So we'll take everything out, all of our essential pieces out to the garage. We'll take some primer. And I have done a separate video on how to do this, but uh, this is pretty much the, the concept. There are a lot of videos that show you how to glue PVC together, but... Um, I have made sure that each part is uh, washed and dried thoroughly before I put on this purple primer. And again, links down below in the description for the stuff that I like to use. And I've used this stuff on several projects that I've done prior involving gluing PVC and have never had a problem with it. You want to make sure the purple primer as you apply to the coupling and to the pipe itself does not pool up considerably. In other words, you don't want it to dry in large large clumps. So, and, and you go about three quarters of, of an inch 
up the pipe. That's about how far it sits into the coupling. And maybe then another, I don't know, eighth of an inch or so. You do want to see some purple as you um, kind of outside, as you put the pipes together, you do want to see some purple um, protruding slightly. So this is pretty much how the priming works. Next, we'll take the cement glue, which is highly toxic stuff, so make sure you have a respirator. And we will pretty much apply it the same or similarly to, as we did the primer. You can read the instructions on the back. Uh, again, make sure you don't puddle or pool. And you have to work kind of quickly here because this is the stuff. The primer will be fine if it sits, but once you put that uh, glue on, it's going to start to dry. So you, you don't need to panic, but you've got to move pretty quickly. And then once both sides, the coupling and the, the pipe are um, applied with cement glue, you will hold it down for a good 30 seconds, maybe more, maybe less, depending on the ambient temperature. But uh, warmer conditions apparently allow you to allow the glue to kind of chemically bond a little faster than in colder conditions. But it will pop out, so you do have to keep constant pressure down. Don't twist it as it dries and make sure it seats properly. After 30 seconds or so, we should have a pretty good bond. Of course, we don't want to handle it or so anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes afterwards, and we definitely don't want to water test anything uh, for a good two hours or more. This stuff needs time to fully cure, but again, read the instructions on the back of the primer and the cement. And don't forget to properly um, prep your, your pipe before. Again, check out the motion, taking a little file, and just making sure those burrs are not uh, present. Uh, and we're kind of going to be using an out to in motion and we'll get that P trap set up and finished. I'll be basically be doing the same thing to all the joints there. So not too bad so far, right? Could be worse. Maybe of course your situation will be different. There's no two bathrooms or, you know, drain setups that are the same. So measuring, you want to measure this about 10 times before you permanently glue it because if you mess this up, you've got to cut it all out and start again. And because you, you, as you can see, I don't have too many more places where I can cut. That PVC is getting kind of short right there where it says six. But anyway, that is the process and the finished PVC uh, P trap and drain the drain where the water will all exit. But I am going to test it before I continue to my next step. So I've got a bathroom, I've got a hose hooked up to my bathroom faucet there. And of course, after proper curing time, I let it sit and cure overnight. I will just put the, the hose, you could also use a milk carton, you know, um, to do it gallon by gallon if you don't have a hose uh, handy or connectable to your uh, bathroom faucet. And I'm just going to let it run. Uh, as much water as I can, um, maybe for 15, 20 minutes. I mean, that's the the advantage of um, not having a plumber do this. Obviously, they can probably do a more sophisticated professional test. Uh, hopefully, there aren't too many people watching this that are cringing as I do this, but a do-it-yourself person like me, I can, I can test it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I can just let it run, you know, and I think if there's no leaks happening, um, I am obviously reaching under there. Uh, at the joints that I just glued, and I'm feeling for moisture, right? I'm checking for any uh, water exiting, and I don't feel anything. Everything seems to be completely dry. So that gives me some reassurance before I install my shower pan and close everything up that indeed we don't have any leaks. So I am pretty happy with that, and I think I can sleep well knowing that things are dry and tight. All right, but to be sure, I am going to apply a layer, a, a kind of a protective layer for myself, my own purposes. I'm a bit crazy and obsessive here. I'm going to take some polyurethane and I'm going to wrap it around just like this so that if anything leaks, once I close this floorboard up and I install that shower pan, if there's any water coming from my, my uh, PVC drain that I just built or the drain installation itself on the shower pan, that all water will be caught and will basically travel down in a downward way. I'm going to drill a, a hole at the bottom of this, a hole that will go through the, the polyurethane. And now I'm on the second floor of a house, so down below is just drywall. So I'm going to protrude, I'm going to drill through the hole, the drywall and the polyurethane, just like that. And y'all are going to think I'm 
totally crazy, but I'm going to take a little plastic washer, not a washer, a um, uh, an anchor, like a drywall anchor, a plastic drywall anchor, and I'm going to put it through this hole. So let me show you here. I want to make sure that plastic is dropping down. There is my anchor, and I'm going to put it through the hole just like this. And I'm going to cut that to length because I don't want it sticking out of my drywall. So I'll do that in a, a step that you won't see, but this, the concept is similar. So that any water that's leaking will collect, travel down, and exit through that hole right there. In other words, I'm going to be able to see if there's a leak by going downstairs and checking the ceiling. A very, very small hole that I made in my ceiling. And I'll patch it up after I'm comfortable that everything's good and tight once we finish this entire project. But call me crazy. I like it. And that's what we're going to do. So to finish, we're going to dry fit. We're not permanently installing this yet. We're still dry fitting. I put the shower pan back on or in. And I'm going to take the rubber gasket. The bevel side will go up in this particular drain. And it has to be pushed down. Get a little dish soap to help it travel a little easier. And it has to seat squarely on the bottom of the brass drain. In other words, push it down with a little by hand and then by, with a little screwdriver until it can't go down any further. And then you'll take your castle nut. And of course, you're going to want to put a little um, washcloth down the drain so you know your parts don't fall down. It does come with this little t tightening tool that is very small and can easily be dropped down the drain. You do not want to do that. Okay, so we'll take the castle nut now and we will tighten it up. And that's going to depress the rubber gasket that we just put in and it will s create a seal There's that little tool that it came with, and you can push that down and the hand tighten. And it's got a little slot in the middle for a flathead screwdriver that you can continue to tighten. And of course, you can also use a pipe wrench to grab it and tighten it even further. All right, this is still dry fit, okay? And I'm testing it out again. I want to test this seal to make sure this seal is good and strong. Now, how do I check? I can't access that floorboard with my shower pan in place. So that's why I really wanted to do that little polyurethane channeling the water underneath where I can check it from my first floor, the ceiling in my first floor. And we are indeed dry. And of course, you don't see that part. But I'm just kind of simulating a shower here, and I'm going to let it run for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Now I'm going to take everything back out for the purposes of this video. And of course, I didn't cement anything down yet, so I can. I have everything just dry fit. So I can check those seams again. I can check the drain itself. Look at that. We are completely dry. So that is how I rebuilt the PVC and the drain and everything in preparation for installing the shower base. All right, so hopefully that has been helpful. In the next videos, we're going to be taking a look at how we can sh level the shower base itself um, and what considerations you need to make. And we're going to be laying a, a mortar bed for it, and we're going to be attaching it to the 2x4s permanently. It'll be really good. And of course, in subsequent videos, we'll be actually be doing the tiling. So stay with me. Subscribe if you want uh, to be notified, of course, on when these new videos come out. Thanks.